welcome back everyone for another video so in my last video i had told you guys a little bit about um me feeling like extremely depressed and going through depression and telling you that there are a lot of christians in the world who are experiencing depression and they are familiar with that even though um like i said when i first became a Christian, I had thought that Christians don't get depression, that when you become a Christian, um, that goes away, which unfortunately, they, that is not the case. You are still human, you are still going to feel depression, sorry, my pants are kind of bunching up, so like I said, um, it is very common for Christians to get depression, and in my last video, like I said, it's called, uh, Even Christians Get Depression. And I will link that in the description below in case you guys have not watched that. So if you guys have not watched that, go ahead and watch that first because in my last one, I'll explain kind of why I've been feeling depressed and kind of just overall what's been going on. Okay, so if not, if you guys don't want to watch it, that's fine too. Um, I'll give you guys just a brief rundown here of what's been going on. So um, with me, I've been kind of paying for everything almost on my own, on my own my old man has been trying really hard to pay off his own credit card debts and he's in a lot more credit card debts than I am and with my roommate currently not working right now I'm the only one who is actually working and I agree to like I said it's not his fault that he's not working um the company that he was working for before was a fucking dick He's been trying ever since then, trying to get a job, and, well, things are not exactly going very well for him, because he has a pathetic misdemeanor on his record, which, that shouldn't be an issue, since my old man has worse record than he does, but yet, for some reason, it's, it's hindering him getting a job, whatever the case. Um, so, he's not, like I said, he's been looking for another job. I am in the process of looking for another job. I actually applied for um, Amazon the other day. I am done with the whole being a security officer. I am literally done being a security officer because, well, it is completely ridiculous and it's not going anywhere. Okay, that is one of the dead end jobs, unfortunately. Uh, granted, security officers usually do pay more, but we are so badly treated like crap, and we're treated like rent a cops. It's just, in my opinion, it's simply not worth it. Okay, um, the clients will treat you like crap, which my current site is in the process of treating us like crap. Um, I seriously feel like I'm walking on eggshells over at that site. My other co-worker does too. And she doesn't want to be there any more than I do. But unfortunately, until I get another job, I can't leave that site. I have to stick it out. But I have an interview Monday morning. So I'm hoping that goes well and I can get the job. Um, but either way, like I said, right now currently most of the bills are on me. It's really stressful. It's really hectic. Uh, me not having anyone really to talk to is kind of also factoring into my depression and just overall feeling like I'm just not good enough. And with my kid just blatantly refusing to eat, um, not really talking much, almost always crying all the time. It's it kind of gets on your it gets on your on your skin and makes you think that oh hey maybe I'm not doing something right maybe it's there's something wrong with me which that's not really the case and I'm kind of starting to realize that it's not based off what I'm talking to other parents and hearing from them so anyway so you said in my last video I would be doing um, some kind of quotes or something to help with maybe depression and I have found 18 verses that would help with depression or get you through your depression. So I have 
the 18 verses, and then underneath them I have a little description of what I think each verse means. So I will read the verse, or like the actual say the verse, what the, what what it is. If you guys want to go to your Bible yourself and go read it, go ahead. And then once I read the verse, when I read that, I'll actually read the verse itself, and then I will tell you what I think what I think I personally got from it. And hopefully these kind of these might help you. I mean, some of them have helped me already. And they've got me really thinking and they've got just got me kind of backtracking on my own kind of depression and what I what I'm currently feeling. So without any further ado and going on and on and on about this, uh, let's go ahead and get into these verses. So first one is Deuteronomy 31.8. Deuteronomy 31 8 says the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you do not be afraid do not be discouraged I mean that in my opinion that's kind of self-explanatory uh, depression will make you feel extremely lonely will make you feel like you're completely cut off from the world completely isolated but this whole entire verse is basically saying that that's not the case okay no matter what you're going through, God is still with you, and He's not going anywhere. So that really stands out to me because it kind of gives me the the encouragement that God is actually with me still, and no matter what I go through, no matter what is still in the, in the future, He is there with me, and He'll be there with me to face it. All right, second verse, Philippines. Philippians 4.8, I said that wrong, oh my gosh, I'm horrible. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such good things. Or such things, sorry. So, I didn't really understand this one at first. Okay, so I had to look up the actual what everyone else thought meant because I just I for me I don't know I didn't really understand it so here's what someone else says that I think it meant it says although there may be difficult or dark times taking time to be grateful and reflect on things that are good can lift your spirits which I do agree with that okay I do I granted I do I just didn't when I read, first read the verse I didn't really understand it I still kind of don't in a sense um, I mean I guess I like a little bit it's just it's the way it's worded is kind of confusing for me at least so yeah all right next verse number three philippians 4 13 i can i can do all things through christ who strengthens me now this is my absolute favorite um i actually have this on one of my uh resumes so one of my job resumes I actually put this right underneath my uh, uh, underneath my like uh, you know your contact information your name no you not know your name uh, your your phone number your address your email address and then there's I have like underneath that in italics I have this actual verse there so what I put for this one is depression can actually zap all energy you currently have and it can make you feel almost impossible to accomplish even just the smallest thing the smallest simplest easiest task however you want to word it but this verse here i can do all things through, all i can do all things through christ who strengthens in me basically reminds me that christ is always there and he's always gonna be there for me he's gonna be able to be and he says like my rock so through him still find the word like yeah i don't okay when i say word i'm talking about the actual bible okay so if you guys have not if you don't know what word means go look at the uh my video for john chapter one but i can still find the word through him so i can actually read the bible and well i can basically literally do anything through him even through the darkest times because like i said he is there for me at all times and I mean that's I mean 
and that's kind of what that's kind of how I took from this verse alone being that I can do anything because he is I guess he's my backbone he's my my rock my he's he's basically what makes me strong strengthens me so it's what makes me strong it's what I'm capable of doing and without him I really can't do anything Next verse is John 16, 33. Now this one says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, now if I could, from, from what I just said, I have not fully read John, so don't don't quote me fully on this one. Okay, I'm on the end, still in the, still in the beginning part of John, but... So Jesus knows exactly what experiences you will have in your whole entire life. Okay, God knows everything. So he will know what kind of different experiences experiences you'll go through. He knows what how difficult they'll be. And these words in a sense are a source of strength as you reflect on his love and his strength for us so through faith and it says like you say oh, yes he said i have overcome the world so through faith you can overcome these obstacles in your life but you can't do them without him you can't do them without jesus jesus is needs you need jesus in order to overcome these so that is what he's saying he has overcome them He's overcome the world, and with him, you can overcome them as well. All right. Hopefully, he's making sense so far. Um, all right. Next one. Jeremiah 29, 11. Now, this one says, for I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So, right now, you might be in this little dark space right now. You might be feeling really alone. You might be feeling completely cut off from everything. But that's not going to last forever, okay? There are going to be better times ahead of you. There are going to be... There's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, okay? So, you might be feeling completely off right now. And that's okay to feel like that. But it's not going to be like that forever. So, God has a plan for you. Even if your current circumstances are proving to be difficult. So, I don't know what God's plan for me is. I don't know what his plan is for you. No one knows what God's plan is for anyone. All you have to do is kind of ride the waves and see what happens. Trust in him. And that's kind of what this verse is basically saying it's saying that he's got plans for you trust in him and he will give you a future so hopefully that helps a little bit too me that helped me for some all right next one matthew eleven twenty eight says come to me all who labor and are heavy bird are heavy laden and i will give you rest so first things is the part where it says uh, who labor and he are heavy burdened uh, or in this case it says heavy laden so laden is you I don't know in my bible it says burden so but depression can be a heavy burden on its own and maybe people think uh, they make a mistake of thinking it's a burden they must carry alone Okay. Now, for example, for the longest time, I've been, that was, my, that was what my mom was doing. She was carrying her, uh, her depression by herself and not really trusting anyone else to do it. I mean, I did the same thing for a while, too. And this verse basically tells you that you don't have to. Okay? Jesus is there to lift your burdens and provide relief for you as 
long as you lay it down on him and you trust him. So that that mean that just really stuck out to me a lot because of the fact that yeah, like I said, that really stuck out to me because of the fact that I don't really have people to talk to. I don't really have people to lay out anything that's going on with me. Okay? And the fact that Jesus is willing to do that is uh, that that's that's pretty big for me. Alright, next one says uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. So Alright, so the next verse I have is, like I said, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In, your, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Now, the way this is worded, it was a little bit confusing for me, but it, after some kind of looking into it, I kind of understood it. So, when you're struggling with depression, it can be understand. It can be kind of difficult to understand why you're feeling certain emotions. Um, so, I don't, I don't. I don't really have an example. I'm trying to think of an example to give you guys, and I really can't think of understanding that. Um, okay, I got an idea. When you're feeling like depressed, like especially with me, I sometimes get a little angry, a little too easy. And I can't express why I'm feeling angry. I just am. And I sometimes lash out without actually intentionally meaning to do so. Um, so, by this verse alone, it just it, it kind of reminds me that the way forward is by trusting in God to provide guidance. And eventually, as it says will make straight your path so basically saying things will eventually look up and I mean that kind of gives me a little hope that while things might be looking kind of murky right now maybe things won't be so murky a week from now or two weeks from now so all right first Peter 5 7 says casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you so explanatory right i mean uh depression anxiety can be extremely isolating experiences and well you, you feel like there's no one to well no one to be there for you but according to this verse jesus is there for you and he cares about you um so you can turn to him for help with whatever you may be feeling and um, lately, I've been kind of doing just that. Um, especially when I'm alone, like right now. I'll put music on, like I currently have, and just kind of zone out. Um, I downloaded um, a, a Bible onto my tablet, other tablet, and I've just been kind of focusing on that. So, next one. Psalms 34 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no e fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, this is from Psalms 23. I love this verse. Um, so, this verse serves as a reminder for God's love for us. So, even in dark times when you're confronting difficult situations, He's walking alongside you and guiding you on a righteous path forward, even though it might not seem like it. Like right now, sometimes I kind of think that I'm alone, and yet there are other times when I feel like I'm not. So hopefully that helps too, because like I said, that one is I memorized. I remember Psalms 23, and that was the one that that was the first one that stuck out to me when I said I was going to do a depression video. Um, next one, Psalms 9 9 says. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. I like that one. So depression can make you feel as if you're weighed down, like anchored down with chains and these big ball bearing ball things, whatever the hell they're called. Um, and this 
verse basically saying, you know, no matter how troubled you are, um, the Lord is always there to support you. He even says that for the oppressed and a stronghold of taunt of times of trouble. So he's basically the stronghold. So yeah, I like that one. Alright, next one. Uh, Matthew six thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So if you place if you first place God on the first at the very front, at the very first, um, and you focus your entirely entirely everything on him, he can help you find what you need to overcome all obstacles. Like Gabriel says right there, say first uh, seek first the kingdom of God. So you seek him first, put him very first, and he will help you through everything. So, uh, Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Alright, so through previous struggles in your life, God has always been there for you. Um, even if you're struggling with depression, uh, mental health concerns, uh, He will continue to be there by your side. And this verse alone can empower you and remind you that you're not alone. So, especially like I said, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So, no matter what, He's always there with you. So, I like that verse too. I keep forgetting the camera's right there and not over there. My my, my phone's sideways. So, alright, Psalms 40, 1 through 2. So it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my, my steps secure. Now, I've not read that far into Psalms, so this one's actually kind of new to me and actually kind of cool, but this is basically a vivid imagery. There's imagery in this verse, and it's basically saying, Personally, it's it looks it sounds like it's related to directly to depression specifically because it's basically saying where was it the miry bog and it's basically he's taking you out of it so in my mind it's basically saying that you're in this kind of pit when you when you are in depression you kind of go down a, a, a flight of stairs and you're in this very bottom of the pit Sometimes it feels like you can't get yourself out of it, but through faith in God, you can find stability and work your way back up this up the stairs again and well, be secure again. So and I will tell you that story a next time, okay? So the next video I probably will tell you the uh, depression scare staircase story. Um Isaiah forty one ten says Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous ha right hand. Uh, so, dealing with depression can be, uh, for some people, extremely scary because you don't know why you're feeling like that. You don't know what is going on. You're pushing people away. You're isolating yourself. And you don't fully know exactly what is happening so this verse just kind of reminds you that with God by your side there's nothing to fear and you'll uh, with him you'll find the strength you need to weather the storm by placing your trust in him so me personally I kind of have a hard time putting trust in people so I'm I'm a little, I'm, I'm starting to learn how to trust God and understand that he's not like people. So he's perfect. So trusting in him is ideal. Okay. He's not going to, he's not going to screw you over. He's not going to hurt you. And 
all he wants to do is help you through everything, give you, show you the truth and everything. So, all right. Um, Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So, simple. No matter what, even if you are in low spirits, you have a broken heart, you're depressed, God will still love you no matter what. And that is the whole entire point for that verse. Alright, Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, that's, that was a mouthful. That was really a mouthful. Uh, this one's basically just saying absolutely nothing can affect or change the love that God has for us, and it is steady fast. I mean, that's really self-explanatory. All right. Last two. All right. Second Corinthians one three through four says, "Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God for of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort our, we ourselves receive from God." That's a mouthful too. I mean, I've read it before. I just never actually read it out loud. That's a lot. Um, so, this verse is basically just saying, take comfort in knowing that God is always there for you. And no matter what troubles you may face or um, what obstacles you will go through, His love will allow us to extend that comfort to others. I hope I hope I hope you understand that I kind of had a little do I do a little research into that verse too. It was slightly confusing to me. All right, last one. Hopefully this one is uh, the best one. Actually, I should I should have saved the strength one for the last one. All right, it says Psalms 37, 23 through 24. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in Him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Now, this, is, this one is basically saying, struggles are part of life, but as God, long as God is in your life, you provide comfort and strength. So, basically, in through all these verses, well, I mean, I, uh, trying to summarize all of these verses together is kind of confusing to do. So, I got another thing I want to show you guys. Alright, so I'm not sure how many people have actually heard of this um, footprint story, but I thought this would be another kind of, uh, not exactly a verse, but something else that could be really helpful for people who are having some kind of depression. Um, to personally, this is actually the very first time I actually heard found this when I was doing this whole research for uh, any kind of Christian background thing for depression. I was, just, I was literally just trying to find anything that could be related to depression and be helpful to other Christians. And I found this story. And like I said, believe it or not, I've never heard of it before reading it this one time. So I want to read it to you guys and hopefully this may or may not help with you guys too. I will include the link to this um, picture in the description below. It is the link to my um, Instagram account. So I will post it for you guys to find it and be able to read it directly yourself. Otherwise, I will post it in writing in the description below too. So it says, one night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes of his life. For each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to him and the other, and the other to the Lord. 
When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened to be happened at the lowest and saddest times of his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you, needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. So, this one really made an impact on me. So, like, when I am feeling really, really down in the dirt and I feel like I can't carry myself on, this, this poem, story, whatever you want to call it, basically reminds me that putting my faith in God and as long as I'm walking with Him, even if there's only one set of footprints in the sand, He's still with me. He's, he, I might not be able to see His footprints, I might not be able to see my own, but Him and I are always going to be walking together. So, you put your faith and your trust in God and you follow Him Good night to you guys now. You guys have a good weekend. And uh, 